Sabitri is divine love manifested on earth. Savitri is sacred. Two cantos have the word love in their title. There's the book of love, book five, and the debate of love and death, book ten, canto three. For me, I read the author's note frequently. Sri Aurobindo felt it important to include this at the beginning of Savitri. And he speaks of each of the characters. Sachavan, the soul carrying the divine truth of being within itself, but descended into the grip of death and ignorance. Savitri, the divine word, daughter of the sun, goddess of the supreme truth, who comes down and is born to save. Ashwapati, the lord of the horse, her human father, is the lord of tapasya. The concentrated energy of spiritual endeavor that helps us to rise from the mortal to the immortal plains. Jumatsena, lord of the shining hosts, father of Sachivan, is the divine mind, here fallen blind, losing its celestial kingdom of vision. And through that loss, its kingdom of glory. And now, this most important section, where Sri Aurobindo says, still, this is not mere allegory. The characters are not personified qualities, but incarnations or emanations of living and conscious forces with whom we can enter into concrete touch. And they take human bodies in order to help man and show him the way from his mortal state to a divine consciousness and immortal life. A wide self-giving was her native act, a magnanimity as of sea or sky enveloped with its greatness all that came and gave a sense as of a great and world. Her kindly care was a sweet, temperate sun. Her high passion, a blue heaven's equipoise. As might a soul fly, like a hunted bird, escaping with tired wings from a world of storms, and a quiet reach, like a remembered breast, in a haven of safety and splendid, soft repose. One could drink life back in streams of honey fire, recover the lost habit of happiness, feel her bright nature's glorious ambience and preen joy in her warmth and color's rule. A deep of compassion, a hushed sanctuary, her inward help unbarred a gate in heaven. Love in her was wider than the universe. The whole world could take refuge in her single heart. And then we read again, apart, living within, all lives she bore. Aloof, she carried in herself the world. Her dread was one with the great cosmic dread. Her strength was founded on the cosmic mites. The universal mother's love was hers. In moments when the inner lamps are lit and the life's cherished guests are left outside, our spirit sits alone and speaks to its gulfs. A wider consciousness opens then its doors, invading from spiritual silences a ray of the timeless glory stoops a while to commune with our seized 
illumined clay and leaves its huge white stamp upon our lives.